Dr. Gada Karmi uh, is a fellow and lecturer at the Institute of Arabic and Islamic Studies at Exeter University. She's a Palestinian in exile. She's also a doctor of medicine and author and academic. And she writes frequently in newspapers, so you might have uh, read her uh, material. And then we have Ewell Klein, who is an Israeli currently living in London. Uh, he has worked with Physicians for Human Rights Israel, uh, the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions, and Breaking the Silence. You might have heard of Breaking the Silence, because they were the people after the Gaza War, the soldiers who broke the silence and said, yeah, there were war crimes done in that war. Uh, he has written various informative materials and gave tours in the occupied territories. He also has a political blog in Hebrew, which uh, I've been told is very popular. Uh, then uh, <coughs> then uh, Frank Barrett uh, is a French peace activist living in London. He's the coordinator of the famous Russell Tribunal in Palestine, uh, which had an event very recently. Uh, and he has also published a book with Noam Chomsky and Elon Pape called Gaza in Crisis, Reflection on Israel's War Against the Palestinians. Uh, and we also have a fourth speaker who's not here at the moment, but he'll be arriving at around uh, uh, half an hour, and he'll be the last speaker to speak. And he's uh, Jody McIntyre, who, if you've seen the news recently, he was on BBC a lot. He's a prolific blogger, uh, a symbol of the anti-war movement. And it is more surprising because he, he has cerebral palsy, which means he can't walk. And he can't speak properly. He has a speech impediment. But he goes to all the student protests. And he was there in the most recent protest where the police dragged him off his wheelchair. And it was quite traumatic to watch. Uh, uh, so we have four very different speakers from very different backgrounds. Each one of them will get around 20 minutes to introduce themselves and tell us why they're an activist. And then we'll open up the floor to you guys so you can have questions. These are academics, peace activists. They know about Palestine. You can ask them anything. If you are an activist yourself and you want to share a story, if you have comments to say, uh, you can also um, say then we'll open up the floor. And there's food as well up front, so don't go anywhere in the middle of the event because then you'll miss out on the food. Uh, See so if I can ask uh, first Dr. Gada Tarmi to give a speech. Uh, right, well, I think it shows me, the fact that you've come shows me that you, even if you're not activists now, you obviously have the seeds uh, the, the, the requirements of be being activists uh, it, because it does take a great interest in this sort of subject to come out on a night like this given the timing and so on. Now, <coughs> it's very interesting that uh, UCL, uh, the students who decided to hold this meeting, should be holding it on the subject of activism and why I'm an activist. It's very interesting that they should do it now, and I'm not talking about Christmas, and I'm not talking about the weather. I'm talking about the student, unprecedented wave of student protests and demonstrations which we've seen in the last few weeks. The most impressive to my mind, and I must be the oldest activist here in this room, uh, with uh, many, many years of experience in this area, it's very exciting for me to see the spirit uh, that has animated the young people and the lecturers who've come out uh, in protest, no matter what the weather, no matter what the conditions, with a huge police presence, yet have come out to make their feelings known and are not stopping. That's what's so terrific, and, I, and you know, I don't have to tell you, this has almost become, the, the students have become the vanguard, the leaders of a wave of uh, mass action, which I think has, will take off and will get bigger and bigger. The trades unions have barely caught up with it. The traditional people who come out on the protests and so on have barely absorbed what's happening. So. It's very interesting that we should be talking about being activists. People already are activists. At your colleagues, at your level, your, your friends are already activists. Now, uh, obviously, uh, I am an activist for the Palestine cause. Uh, but of course, to be an activist uh, is really all your, what you're really saying. What does it mean to say you're an activist? It means First, that there is a cause or causes which you feel strongly about, 
But secondly, you are not content to sit and read about those causes or feel about them or feel angry sitting at home or in the pub or whatever. <coughs> you believe that you have to do something. Now, it's this spirit in, in people which has enabled us to have changes in history. What else has changed history? You know and I know that if uh, things were always left uh, to their natural formations, what happens is that the powerful, the, the rich, the people with the army, uh, the pe are the ones who take over, who dominate, and who oppress. That's what actually happens. That's a sort of normal condition. If it were not for people who said throughout history, no, we don't accept this. This is unjust. We demand our rights. We demand justice. And we're going to do something about it. That's how it's always happened. So to be an activist is a wonderful thing. You must know that the word has uh, uh, pejorative associations. You know that in the used by the right-wing press, by people who are fundamentally against uh, uh, egalitarianism, the word activist has a particular color. I'm sure you're all aware of this. Uh, there's a slight scorn in it. You know, he's an activist. Like you might say, he's a lefty. Or, you know, she's some, uh, you know, the sort. An activist. Meaning somebody who's not really, uh, who's a bit hysterical, who's not really um, part of mainstream society, uh, and who's a bit weird. That's how very often you see that word used. And of course, nothing is further from the truth. Because to be an activist is to put your money where your mouth is, to say, I believe in something, I'm not going to sit there, I'm going to do something about it. Right, now, clearly, somebody like myself felt this very strongly a long time ago, which is why I became an activist. Now, I should say that maybe in my case, it really wasn't very surprising that I would have become an activist because I'm Palestinian. That means I didn't, uh, uh, in a sense, I didn't look for a cause. I didn't uh, 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 discover a cause. I was born, unfortunately, with a cause uh, because um, my country was taken by others in 1948, and I and my family were displaced, lost our homes, lost everything in the ex establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, <coughs> and because of the establishment of the State of Israel. If there were no Israel, I probably wouldn't be here this evening talking to you. I may have come as a, vis or as a visitor, but certainly not as, not as I am now. I would have been in my own homeland, in my own country, doing the kind of things that most of you take for granted. That you might go and study, perhaps in another country, you might study uh, in your home country and maybe go abroad to specialize, you may go abroad for, tour for tourism, for visits, whatever. But your base is your country, your family is in your country, and you'll go back there, most of you, even those who've gone out, will go back there, and you expect to have your children grow up there and your grandchildren, and when the time comes, you expect to die and be buried in your homeland. That is not something that I can do. It is not open to me to do that. Do you understand what that means? You only really know what it, what it means when you don't have it, when you can't take it for granted. The fact that I cannot do those things, my children do not live in my homeland, they were not born in my homeland, and almost certainly the way things are going, it will be many, many years before their children uh, can have the possibility of going to their grandparents' home. Um, that's how it is. Now, 
The fact that this tragedy, which occurred to me personally, but of course to hundreds and thousands of others, and now millions who are the descendants of all those people, the fact that that happened as a result of an unjust act is exactly why I had to become an activist. You see, I could have lost a portion of my homeland due to an earthquake. Okay? Imagine, a great tsunami appears and sweeps all before it, or the heavens open and the, the earth opens and psh, uh, <coughs> my village, my town, whatever it is, is swallowed up. Now, that's very sad, but it's a very different feeling when you say to yourself, well, it was an act of God, it was terribly unlucky for us that we lived in that part of the world where there was a seismic weakness, whatever it is, um, but it's a very different feeling to the one that I have and other Palestinians have. We lost our homeland due to an act of injustice and an injustice which has not been put right. Now, how much more does anybody need for a cause where the, the most fundamental qualities that human beings search for, want, desire, fight for, the, those elements are precisely the elements that characterize the Palestine question. The fact that the dispossession and the refugee flight and the refugee expulsions took place as a result of a deliberate act to establish a state for other people in my homeland number one, and number two, nobody has put that injustice right. 62 years have passed since 1948, and nobody has put it right. Can you even believe this? Can you credit that such a thing could have happened? Because, of course, the Palestine problem, Israel-Palestine, etc., is so much in the news. People who are not part of that, and I fully understand, probably begin to feel that, well, that's how it is. It's like you might say Dublin is the capital of Ireland, or, you know, it rains in, uh, uh, in winter or something. You know, these are kind of facts which happen. But it's not. 62 years of the results of a deliberate act which caused a very great deal of suffering and which continues because, of course, the Israeli state not only establishes, established itself in Palestine, in another people's homeland, the Israeli, uh, successive Israeli policies have continued to oppress the Palestinians who have remained, what of them remained in part of the original homeland, con uh, are continually oppressed and are expelled or have to leave or are evicted from their homes all the sort of stuff you read about in the newspapers. Now